Hello and welcome to another episode of Lemur's Corner. I am Lemur and today we are doing the BWL guide. This is the second time I've done it. The first time I missed a couple things um, and it was not proper so I took it down and I am redoing it now to ensure that it is correct. Um, so we're going to talk about the first boss who there are no ads to initially uh, is going to be Razor Gore. So Razor Gore is the boss that you're going to see here. He has two phases. He's got phase one which lasts about 15 minutes uh, and then phase two um, which can last a couple minutes after that. But basically what happens during phase one, uh, you kill these ads over here to my left. Uh, these ads uh, you can't see them right now, but, but these ads, basically you kill them, and then you have someone grab this orb that you see my wheel is over here in the left uh, that has the thing coming out of it. Uh, over here on the right, that will mind control Razor Gore. Uh, what you then need to do is you need to clear these eggs with Razor Gore. He has other skills, the ability to sleep, um, all that stuff. Uh, on Razor Gore, but you use them as your pet, and basically you go ahead and take out all of these eggs. Once you take out all of these eggs, you get to fight Razor Gore himself. While you're taking out the eggs, though, there will be ads that spawn from four pillars. These four pillars here are going to be one, two, and then the opposite side next to that door over there. Uh, these ads are going to come out. Uh, there are three different types of ads that are going to come out. There's mages, melees, and dragons. Um, their names, um, and basically what you want to do is you want to kill the mages first. You want to then kill the uh, the melee guys or the warriors that are going to come out and then you want to kill the dragonkins so it's mages uh the warriors are called legionnaires and dragonkins dragonkins you can kite or sleep if you want to it is completely up to you uh but basically you want to focus on the mages legionnaires uh, and dragonkins if possible um from there there are two, three ways you can do it if you have enough dps you can kill them as they spawn um with the tank in the middle and just murder them really quick uh second option is to use these stairs uh basically what you do is you stick a tank on the corner of each one of these stairs kind of generally in this location you put your healers on the corner on the side so they can reach each of the tanks uh, and then your casters are up here and your melee dps is down towards the base of the stairs uh, and then as the ads spawn you grab them and pull them over and kill them um, and that way they're forced to come that way plus you can protect your orb holder uh, from getting aggro um, but to note uh, razor gore himself can get a uh, threat so once you get an egg what you want to do is you want to pop the egg and then get near one of your tanks so that the tanks can pull threat off of you for the ads uh, and that allows you to continue managing those uh, ads um, but while you're killing razor gore's eggs um, i want to note that it's best to clear out these middle ones first so this whole middle section you see me circling with my thing. Uh, reason being that's the hardest point to get threat off of the boss. Um, then from there you want to clear this left side over by the orb holder. Uh, reason being is then you want your boss to end up over here. So when you tank him, um, he has to run across the room. So then you want to clear all the rest of the eggs, continuing to kite and kill adds. Um, I always suggest that you kill this egg over here on the top left corner last. Uh, reason being, is, or whatever egg is the furthest distance from where you plan on tanking him. Um, but basically you clear this egg so that he has to run across. However, before you kill the last uh, egg, what you want to do is you want to have your main tank go ahead and grab um, the orb. So your main tank should be tanking. And then right before the last egg pops, your tank runs up, grabs the mind control piece and blows the last egg reason for this is so that he gets threat so the person who does the mind control gets the threat at the end so your main tank's able to have first threat he then can tank it so for our guild we are going to be tanking him right here where you see diggity i'm um, standing there's a little t in the ground right here you stand right kind of pretty much on the corner of the t and basically what we're going to do is we're going to have our raid uh, pretty much standing in this back section. So our healers, casters, and everything will be right here. Um, minus one or two healers that we're going to leave. Um, one healer here for the melee as they're healing and they'll pop in and out. Uh, but basically what the plan is, is Razor Gore does an AoE fireball and you can time it. So basically what happens is when we call for AoE fireball, they can step over here and you can line of sight it. So you don't take any raid damage and then step back out. Um, that's why we're going to put one druid standing here for healing uh, so he can heal the raid. Uh, and then the melee can come over here and jump underneath this one to, to line of sight it. But basically you just murder him and kill him really quick. Uh, and it should be pretty simple, tank and spank. Uh, one note that you need to know is he has what's called a conflagration. Uh, basically, he's going to hit one of your tanks. He's going to hit with the conflag. They're going to lose some threat. That's why your off tank needs to be in a good place. Um, I highly recommend having all Fury Prot Warriors for this uh, so that they can generate lots of threat continuously because there's no taunting. Razor Gore is not tauntable. Um, so basically, uh, you tank them, you kill them, and it's pretty easy. Uh, but the catch is is you want to note that you want to give your tanks a second after they get it. So basically what we suggest is once he comes over, he's going to come to the tank, give them a second, wait for him. Tanks call. We're ready for it for them to generate enough threat and then just murder him down. Um, if you want to go right away, that's fine. If you trust your tanks, I'm totally for that. Uh, it's up to you. 
Once you've got Razor Gore down, though, uh, basically what you don't want to do, uh, make make sure that no one goes through this gate over here. The reason. All right, so we're back here, and we've killed Razor Gore. He's done. Uh, you see this gate's open. As I said, though, you don't want to have uh, anyone go into this gate. Reason being is there's about four or five uh, got Blackwing technicians on here, and basically what you want to do is you want to have uh, someone with sprints, so rogues or druids, run through, and they need to tag each one. Uh, basically, when we're tagging each one of these, you can see they say they're running. Uh, you can see these goblins, there they are. Um, they're going to run down and tag them. The reason these are so important is because they carry your uh, Elementium Ore. Uh, this Elementium Ore is going to be for your Thunder Fury and all that fun stuff. You can see them running, and if they reach this door, uh, you will no longer have access to them. So you can see Talos is attempting to chase him down. He has a Hunter running with him with Axe back to the pack. And because he was by himself, he won't get the last five. Uh, but he did get the first one, so really what you want to do is have two of them go in. So you have one go this way. Uh, and you have one go to this left side uh, and grab all of those goblins to make sure you get them all for that elementium ore. Once they have them, um, I suggest they jump down right here um, and bring it right here. So you have your whole raid waiting right here on the other side of this door. Uh, and then you bring them down, you jump down, and then the tanks grab them, melt them, uh, and then you move on to Valstraz. All right, welcome back. So we are here at Valstraz. Uh, Valstraz is going to be um, a boss that's going to be rough uh, if you don't have the proper mechanics in place. So first things first, your main tank is going to be standing up here. He will be the one that talks to Valstraz, and we'll get DPS uh, aggro initially. This is a timed fight. You have three minutes to kill the boss. If you do not kill him in three minutes, basically the chances of killing him are pretty much zero. Um, with that being said, to set up your raid, as I said, tanks are up here where you see the bear. Uh, melee is going to be stacking on the back leg of the boss. Reason being is there's a tail swipe and a cleave, and we are going to talk more about that cleave here in a second. Um, and then your range is going to be back here, um, generally in this box location, um, if you're tanking in this exact format. Uh, reason being is your healers can still target and heal the tank, um, and they can heal the melee. But at the same time, um, when we get to the uh, aggro positions, or I'm sorry, the uh, boss abilities, um, we'll talk about why we're going to be using this specific strategy. So the boss has three major abilities. First, which is cleave. Um, this cleave has a chaining ability. So, for example, if one of your warriors comes up here and stands right here, um, this guy, is, your main tank is going to get cleaved. If he gets cleaved, then it chains onto your melee, and next thing you know, your entire raid's taking a cleave that it shouldn't have. So that's why we tell you every single melee needs to stack up here on this back leg, uh, and your range needs to be back here so that it can heal, um, and no one's near the tank getting that cleave. Um, the next ability is going to be a pulsing aura of fire damage. Um, you can, if you want to, uh, go to Ubers and get the fire resist buff uh, off of uh, the uh, mobs, the mobs in there. Um, if you want to get that for yours, if you're having a healing issue, um, it is an option. Um, the next thing uh, that you have to worry about is what's called uh, the uh, bomb, as we like to call it specifically, um, but the actual name for this bomb uh, is going to be burning adrenaline. Basically what happens with this um, is you are going to get way more damage. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, but basically you have 20 seconds to live. Um, you take 5% damage every second of your life. So you do need to get healed on this. Normally having one person designated as the bomb healer. Um, and basically what you do is you're going to be running this way. Um, he casts this every 15 seconds just so you're clear. Um, and what you do is you kind of run this way. When that bomb blows up, you want to be um, right where I'm standing. Uh, so basically if you're ranged, you should be over here. This way you can cast on the boss, do all that extra damage on him, um, but die in a position where it doesn't blow up the entire raid because it does 5,000 damage to everyone. Just like in Baron, um, if you're melee, what I highly recommend is you literally run through um, and grab this other leg, do DPS till about five seconds left uh, or so, and then run out. Um, your healer should still be able to heal you from on this side, um, and then basically you run out and go die over here so you can die by yourself and not blow anyone up with about five seconds left um, and still do tons of damage to the boss while ensuring you are watching your threat. Um, and if you pull threat from the boss, the boss will turn, breathe, and cleave and destroy the raid. So um, those are the major points uh, for raid problems. However, um, there's a couple more points we need to talk about, one of which is every third burning adrenaline uh, will be dumped onto the tank. So basically the person with uh, the main uh, threat on the boss. With that being said, you need to maintain your aggro um, on here. And uh, basically... <coughs> um, 
your off tanks need to be right behind you in threat. So sometimes giving your tanks a couple seconds to do it, making sure everyone has salve. If you're on the lion side, if you're horde side, you just might have to wait a little bit to ensure that they're getting their threat properly, being in defensive stance, um, doing your counter strikes, heroic strikes, everything. So warriors should be heroic striking if you're going to be off tanking. Um, and basically I suggest fury warriors hold back for the first 10% because when we get to 40%, you get to execute spam at 100% rage. Um, that is one part I did not talk about on this really briefly. Um, you have 100% mana 100% uh, focus and 100% rage throughout the entire fight pretty much um, the mana is technically not 100% but basically you will never run out of mana so in general you can spam it so if there's people not taking damage um, you should be able to spam prayer of healing uh, tranquility all of those things should be able to get spammed flash heals renews just do everything in your power to heal everyone you can you should never stop healing you should never be stopped healing so this is all about healing power um, if you have a healing power set versus an mp5 set i highly recommend it um, but what's going to happen is when the person that is the tank has it um, they're going to be losing health and you need to get threat off them right away. So as soon as that uh, position's about to start, so where we know one, two, uh, maybe on the, the second bomb, you have your first off tank who's highest in threat, jump onto the other side of the boss and continue DPSing. The moment the other person gets the threat, what you need to do is you need to cycle your way up to the front of the boss and come around and take the position and get the boss off of your main tank. The reason for this um, is that you need to make sure you're ready to go and ready to pull this off of them. Uh, as I said, the reason for this is that chain cleave again. That's why you cycle to the left side, come across, run up, uh, and then go ahead and pull aggro uh, from the boss, and you should be good to go and ready to tank it, and it shouldn't be a problem. No one should get chain cleaved. Then your tank can choose how they want to do it. They can either go die in a corner if they have, if it's too fast, they can just come over here and die, or if they still have time left because your off tank was a fantastic person, got there really quickly, they can jump to this back leg, do some DPS really quick while they're jumping back there, uh, and then progress to make their way over here and die in a safe spot so they don't blow up. So as long as you follow those procedures, you should be able to melt the boss down and get it done really quickly. Um, so we're going to go ahead and kill the boss now and move on to the next pack of ads. <clears throat> All right, welcome back. So we are making our way up the stairs over here to the Dragonkin room. I'm going to show you this. Um, you're going to fight these down on the first level down here. Uh, we're going to kill them up here because it's super easy. Um, but basically what you're going to do is you're going to have four different types of death talons you've got your captains flame scales seethers and uh, wormkins uh, you're going to need to sleep the wormkins because they do a ton of damage you're going to want to kill the seethers first then the flame scales and the captains you're going to need to tank the seethers and the flame scales separate of the captains um, and as i said you're going to be um, sleeping the worm uh, the wormkins so what's going to happen is you're going to have a hunter right here he's going to just serpent shot pull and run his little butt right off this ledge and jump off what you are going to do though is you're going to have your druids standing here um, and they're going to be standing here either in cat form and hidden or something of that nature and when those seethers come by running down this thing you need them to immediately sleep it um, and it's got to stay sleep the whole time so your druid's going to be sitting there sleeping this stuff keeping it sleeped and then you, they can help heal the raid from this top uh, position but they're going to stay up on this balcony um, and as soon as we call for the seethers basically they're going to keep them sleep the whole raid's going to come up um, and kill the seethers or you can have them jump off um, jump under this balcony and pull down the seethers and then everyone else can grab them and kill them um, but basically how we're going to work it is we're going to have our main tank watching um, and see what target comes down when that target comes down um, they're going to pick that side as with the captain they're going to grab the captain and place it either on the back of this pillar or the opposite pillar so the druids above can help heal the main tank. Uh, and once they're on these pillars, then the opposite uh, pillar is going to be occupied by most of the raid, uh, the range and everything, so they'll stand about here. So let's, for example, say that the this pillar right here is where the main tank is. Your ranged and melee will stack up here initially, and then um, all the other tanks are gonna grab their parts and place them over here in this general area. And as I said, uh, you're going to kill um, those seethers first, then the flame scales, then the captains. However, there's one big note about the captains you need to know, and that is they do a mark of detonation. Um, this needs to be dispelled immediately, um, and this needs to happen very, 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 very quickly. Otherwise, it will blow up in the raid and do it. Um, I recommend spreading out the raid just a little bit if you can once everything's in position uh, to ensure just in case someone doesn't get dispelled that it happens. Um, but we're going to go ahead and kill these dragonkins and stuff, get them dead, uh, and we will move on to the suppression room.
All right, welcome back. So we are here at the suppression room. Uh, basically, what's going to happen is you're going to see we're going to line up right here with our raid. Our raid's going to come here, uh, and we're going to stand here and pull as many of these hatchers and taskmasters masters as possible. Reason being is they don't respawn. So if you can pull them back here and kill them, um, you don't have to worry about them. As you see, all this stuff pats left and right in general. Um, so whatever side you decide to go up, there's a great side. You can go up the right side or you can go up the left side. It is completely up to you. Um, and what you want to do is and stop at a safe point. Safe points in general are uh, normally these little corners right here in the pillars. So for example, um, this is kind of what, what I'm talking about is the safe points are right here uh, on that stuff. So you can jump over there into those corners and have a safe spot or that one. Um, and then there's the halfway safe spot on the stairs. So you could go up over and to the left um, and it's and it's fantastic that way as you can see um, they're beginning to progress up the right side uh, it's technically the safer side reason being um, is there's more safe spots on the right side than there is on the left side uh, going up so you can see how these come across these hatchers um, they're going to come across they're going to keep getting killed um, the biggest thing you have to note is these suppression devices so you can see how these are pushed down um, we are in retail so anyone can push them down but in uh, BWL for classic, you're going to need your rogues doing this. No matter what you do, is you have one rogue stay with the group. Um, the rest of the rogues are kind of uh, invisible and daisy chaining their way up here, trying to disarm these traps to keep the way clear for uh, the next group. Now, they don't want to get too far ahead because the catch is, is you need your hunters ready to pull these as they come over. So you have a hunter watching and you see how these whelps respawn. We got to kill these whelps. And so, like, for example, if we're going this way, we're like, oh crap, this is going to get hit by a rogue. So we have a hunter pull this hatcher right here to the group and pull it. Now, as I said, though, there are safe spots um, on this side that are way more vast than the other one. One of the best safe spots is actually right here at the end in this corner or on the opposite side of this corner right here. But in general, there are safe spots in almost every corner where you can sit and drink and pause for a second. Um, with that being said, though, there is the halfway safe point. If you can make it straight to the halfway safe point, it is so much better. Um, it is right up here in this corner. So basically what you do um, is this is only going to have whelps in it. So basically you quickly smash out these whelps, make them all dead, we'll wait for these whelps to all die. And then at this opportunity, you would jump into the corner, um, in the corner, or you can just sit on the stairs and just sit really quick and drink water. This is considered a ha halfway point and it's the safe point. And then we can continue moving forward, either staying on the right side or the left side. I highly recommend the right side um, on this one, just because then you're going to be fighting Broodlord at the end. So let's get our way up to Broodlord and talk about that. All right, welcome back. So we are going to talk about your Broodlord Lash Layer strategy. Um, basically, what you want to do is when you finish the suppression room, you do want to group up your entire raid on this side of the pillar. Uh, the reason you want to group the raid on this side of the pillar is you want to make sure everyone's ready to go uh, until you go into the, the boss. So basically, everyone's going to group up here. When you're ready, you're going to turn this corner. Rogues need to make sure that this suppression device, this suppression device, and this suppression device are down so no one is getting slowed while they're uh, approaching brood lore. Once you get that suppression down, what you're going to do is you're going to turn this corner um, and you see where Theoden is. Most of your healers and casters can stand right here and DPS the boss um, and keep the tank up in general from right here and you can heal them. Um, and all you then have to worry about is your whelps uh, on that side, um, which we are going to place a paladin right here. That's our rat paladin since this is going to be a threat issued fight um, and they're just going to drop consecrate with holy um, up so they can generate more threat and then hopefully help keep the whelps off and just blow them up really quick with aoe um, with that being said though the boss is going to be tanked right here where talus is he's going to hold the boss um, we're going to have all three of our tanks there's no cleave um, they're going to tank them right here all of them back to the wall because there are three skills specifically you need to keep your eye open for first is knock away knock away is going to drop half the threat of whoever he kicks um, normally it's the person that is the current tank uh, unless something goofy happens and then it drops half the threat so your other tanks need to be ready to keep threat and generate it uh, and the next thing is he does is a blast wave uh, the blast wave is going to happen randomly uh, and basically you need to um, come out and heal yourself if you're too low uh, and manage yourself as a melee this is mostly a ranged fight in general 
And the last and most important thing is Mortal Strike. The boss is going to Mortal Strike a tank. Um, that's going to reduce the healing debuff uh, and make it so they're weak and give them a giant hit for damage. Um, with that being said, uh, normally what you can do is if you have Fury tanks, um, you want them to Fury tank, dual wheel tank it, and then immediately flip to a, a shield right before the Mortal Strike hits because that'll hit you for about 5,000. The other thing is you must, and I mean must, have Demoralizing Shout Up. If you don't have Demoralizing Shout Up, he is going to one shot your tanks possibly even in tier three gear so with that being said um one of the strategies you might want to do is take dps very very slow at the front um, since you can't taunt the boss give the tanks a good long chance to get a nice amount of threat on them and then go ahead and start dpsing the boss at no time should anybody um, pass a tank in threat um, we're going to have three tanks up there so if any of those tanks are passed in threat um when they get kicked, knocked away or anything like that, you're going to cause a lot of problems. Your priests and all those things are going to need to fade and try your best to manage your threat. Really, this is a threat fight. As long as your tanks can take it, they can block out that mortal strike the best they can, uh, and you can survive the knockaways. Um, you should be good. As I said, though, you need to keep your suppression devices down, this one specifically. Uh, so as long as you have, you have got to keep one rogue back here uh, to keep the suppression device down. And then normally you'll have your rat paladin standing right here or something of that nature just to prep for uh, the whelps when they do come. As soon as they come up, you just got to murder them and then go back to the boss. Uh, it's not a DPS race. There's nothing about it. But once you kill them, it's all said and done. All right, welcome. We have made it to the lab packs. Um, the lab packs are fun and can be a, a nightmare to deal with. So there's four different types of mobs in the lab packs. There's the black wing technicians. You can see them right in front of me. Um, they're the little goblins right there. There are warlocks. You can see them with the stabs. Uh, and then there are spell binders. You can see one right there. And then there are overseers. Those are the big dragonkins that are over there. Uh, Blackwing technicians need to be dealt with in an AOE fashion. They do a ton of AOE damage. You don't want your melee near them. Uh, this is where a frost mage can be helpful or like a tank mage kind of thing. Um, uh, when you're pulling these, be careful of Fire Maw. He does pat pretty close to the door. Uh, but on top of it, um, there's the Warlocks. The Warlocks need to be dealt with pretty quickly um, by your melee first. So basically what you're going to do, um, I'm just going to explain this pack in front of me, and then I will add in the Overseers and the war, uh, Spellbinders in the end. So you see there's a Warlock in front of me. What you want to do is you want to have a Mage pull or a Hunter or something of that nature. Drop a Frost Trap right here to slow him down. You want a Mage that's Frost to try to Blizzard, slow him down, um, and keep this Lab Pack uh, slowed out in here. And then the Warlock needs to be grabbed and tanked to the side um, they will summon fell guards that you need to grab these fell guards need to be killed immediately um, so what you do is you have your melee on the warlock when that fell guard spawns they turn and kill the fell guard and then proceed to continue killing the warlocks uh, and then the lab packs or the technicians will be uh, aoe down um, we're going to go ahead and kill this first group really quick so we can see the spell binders and the death talons uh, the Death Talon Overseer over here, you can see, um, padding right here. I'm going to target him. Um, I am not sure if this shows on Classic, uh, but you can see that there's this Elemental Shield on him. Uh, each one of them has an Elemental Shield. Only one type of magic is increased. All other is massively decreased. Uh, so in general, uh, you want to have everyone cast that specific type. So in this case, it's going to be Fire Damage. You want to focus on that. If you're bringing a Shadow Priest, uh, I would recommend... Uh, using that Shadow Priest uh, to kill other stuff or heal, help heal is probably the best option for you. Um, and then there's also the spell binders. Um, the spell binders uh, deal just a ton of AOE damage. They do frost strikes um, and they're immune to all magic, so they can't be polymorphed. And they also randomly polymorph people uh, in your raid, so those need to be dispelled and decur or dispelled. So what you want to do is when you pull these, you want to mark them, understand what you're bringing. Um, the overseers need to be tanked separately. Um, they need to be tanked to the side because they do a cleave uh, and hit really hard. So probably put your main tank on those. Um, but basically how it works is when you pull, so specifically this group, when you pull it, um, you're going to grab all the labs. You're going to have those AOE down. That overseer and all these warlocks are going to be grabbed the best they can by the tanks. They're going to bring them around the corner um, or wherever you plan on tanking them on this side. I highly recommend keeping them on this side so you don't pull the boss. Uh, and then you are going to kill them down uh, in order of warlocks uh, and then spell the binders and overseers reason being is the spell binders you should have your melee on uh, and then the overseers should be killed by your casters uh, because that's, they do extra damage to those overseers uh, and they can be killed in tandem with them so once we clear this last lab pack we'll be on fire maw 
Um, so we'll go ahead and kill this lab pack uh, and kill it <clears throat> and talk about Fireball. All right, welcome to Fire Maw. So it is time to look at Fire Maw and take him down. So uh, positioning is going to be um, one of the biggest things for this boss. It's all about line of sighting. Uh, first off, what you want to do is you want to have your main tank standing right where you see Diggity right here. Um, he's going to pile himself into the corner. Um, while he's in this corner, you can have your healers stand right here. Uh, and those healers can continue to cast and heal him without getting in line of sight of the boss. Reason you want to do this is because the boss has what's called a flame buffet. Uh, this flame buffet is cast on anyone in his line of sight, uh, and it does continuous damage until those flame buffets fall off. So um, what you also want to do then is have your casters on this side. They can peek in and out and do damage um, when they get um too much damage or too many flame buffets on them about seven uh, if you're playing it say five to seven depending on how many raid heals you have um if they need to come back in and jump back in and go in and go out uh, one thing i do want to note right now is all your tanks need to make sure they have their ani cloaks on reason being is there is a shadow flame that if you get caught by it it's in front of the person um if you get caught by it it will kill you pretty much instantly if you are not wearing your uh, on a scale cloak so make sure you wear your on a scale cloak uh, the next thing you need to know is to make sure um, you have your two tanks so we're going to three tank this um, you're going to have your main tank and your two off tanks you're going to have one as your main tank off tank so this person's kind of going to go and replace the main tank when the flame buffet stacks get too high in the main tank um, and the second tank or the third tank or whatever you want to look at it or the other tank is going to be what's called the uh, wing buffet tank so there's a wing buffet that the boss casts it basically knocks you back uh, and drops your threat so what you need to do is have your tank standing here with the melee um, and then you're going to run out um, when they call for the wing buffet it drops uh, roughly every 25 seconds or so you're going to come over here taunt the boss um, and take the wing buffet lose your threat and then the main tank should get the threat back uh, and then you run your butt back over here and just sit here until the next wing buffet and you just kind of run it out taunt it and take the wing buffets um, and then as i said you have your spare off tank over here because when the wing buffets get too large for the main tank, they need to come out, take the wing main tank spot, and taunt the boss. So the main tank can come over here and go ahead and get those flame buffets to drop while continuing to get healed. Um, also, as I said, though, your melee is going to be here so they can come out, backstab the boss, stab, stab, stab. When their stacks get too high, they can run back over here. Uh, I suggest about four healers or so on this side um, because the healer's job is going to be healed both the melee uh, and the off tank. So you can kind of use this position as I'm standing right here to kind of do both. Um, and that way you can just step in and out to try to remove flame buffets, flame buffets yourself. Um, these should be your stronger healers on this side because they have to manage flame buffets themselves. Uh, and there's going to be a lot more damage going out versus this side. There's going to be no flame buffets on these healers so they can just sit here and heal everyone and keep everyone up and it's just about managing the flame buffets um, but that's really going to be it for flame gore all right so there's all the, flame, the uh, right in front of us we've made it to the worm guards um, there's another lab pack over here just so you know um, and there's a bunch of lab packs upstairs which are all the same i will show you where they are uh, but other than that we'll talk about the last pack and this pack here uh, basically what you want to do is you have your four tanks on each one of these um, take them against the wall um, and pick based on the um, spell that is what's most beneficial so if you have a shadow one have your shadow priest and your warlocks on that one if there's a frost one have your warlocks or mages on that one um, and then just deal with them in order you want um, and just make sure you keep them tanked and alive uh, in general and we can just kill them and move on um, they're just pretty much tanked don't get cleaved melee should go on the one that you've decided to kill first uh, and then melee should work their way down killing them but in general you should focus on uh killing the ones with the specific spell for your casters on that one uh, but we're gonna go ahead and kill those and get all these lab packs upstairs done before we pull um the last two fire bosses all right so we are back so these are the lab pack locations as i said we just killed those talons you come up these stairs lab pack you can pull them down the stairs um i it's whatever you want to do with them uh, i pull them down the stairs it's easier to fight them in an open room you're going to clear the right and the left up here too um, continue to pull these down the stairs it makes life a little bit easier however um, these three worm guards up here do not pull them down um, reason being is there is a fourth guy behind them so you can see that little goblin back there i'm going to step forward a little bit um, just to show that uh, his name is the master elemental shaper uh, and basically what you want to do there is um, when you pull these worm guards obviously you want to pull them to the side do them just like that other pack downstairs based off of the magic damage they do um, and what order you want to kill them but this is where you need to add a hit priest so a shadow priest or some kind of hit priest where they've got as much hit gear as they can you need to mind control this guy reason being is you have to craft what are called elementium bars when you mind control these bars um, you need to go ahead 
and um, cast that spell on him uh, off of uh, onto your person that is going to be crafting the elementium bars. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to turn on my display. Um, they're going to pull these wormkins, and I'm going to go ahead and mind control this guy so you can see what he's like. So they're going to go up there, pull these wormkins really fast, uh, and we'll mind control this guy and get him in. And then um, because this is retail, you're not going to see the opportunity to, uh, unfortunately, um, do the uh, casting of the spell, but you mind control him. Um, kill the worm guards, um, keep him mind controlled. So your shadow priest is just kind of sitting by himself in a corner, keeping this guy alive um, and trying to cast this onto your uh, members and you'll cast your elementium ore onto who needs it. All right, welcome to Ebonrock and Flamegore. These are going to be much easier than uh, Firemaw. Uh, specifically, Ebonrock is the first one you're going to fight. Um, what you want to do is you want to have your tanks in three locations. So for this is for Ebonrock specifically. You need one tank in this corner. This is going to be what's called your wing buffet tank. You need your main tank or off tank over here. So you can see where Talos is currently attacking Flamegore. That's going to be your uh, wing buffet tank's position. Uh, we're on retail, so I don't have to worry about anything. Then your main tank is going to be standing where I'm at right now, uh, and then an off tank over on this side specifically. So you're going to be in a triangle formation, um, and basically you've got one here and one here, um, and those three tanks are then going to uh, basically have them here. Your DPS melee is going to be standing here, just stabby stabbying. Uh, range can be about here, and healers can be out here. There's no... Uh, reason to worry about too much. Uh, once again, your tanks need to make sure they have their honest scale cloaks on. Uh, as long as your melee kind of arranged stand in a straight line from the back of the boss, so kind of line up uh, with that wing buffet tank, it makes life really easy. Uh, and for Ebonrock, what you have to dodge is what's called the Shadow of Ebonrock. Uh, when this is cast on your main tank, uh, if he attacks that tank, uh, he will heal himself for 25,000 damage. So pretty much what you need to do is when you get Shadow of Evanrock, your off tank immediately tanks it, um, taunts it, takes the the boss, uh, and basically you trade back and forth between Shadows of Evanrock. Um, and then when his bing, wing buffet's about to come up, you have your third wing buffet tank standing in this location, taunt him, take the wing buffet, and then the two tanks go back to taunting it. So pretty much your job is just to sit here uh, and take wing buffets. Uh, it's really uh, simple, um, easy to kill. Um, and easy to get through. Uh, and then for Fire Flame Gore, you only need two tanks. So you can tank them either here and here or whatever. But basically, your wing buffet tank sits here. Your off tank or your main tank stands here. Basically, your main tank tanks them, tanks them, tanks them. Um, he will frenzy. Uh, when he frenzies, you need to immediately train shot him. Otherwise, he does a fire nova uh, every other second. Um, and basically, if you trank shot him immediately, uh, he goes down from his frenzy, um, and you just kill him and tank him. Uh, and then again, you have to worry about those wing buffets, and those wing buffets are just tanked by the main the off tank and just got kicked up in the air, and then the main tank takes him back and tanks him. Once again, your range should just stand back here uh, so they don't get breathed on and take that shadow flame. Once you've killed both of these, you'll make you up your way towards Crow Magnus. Um, you're going to kill three more worm guards, tank these as you would the other ones. Once you've killed these three uh, worm guards, we can go ahead and take a look at the Crow Magnus fight and how it's going to look. Um, you're just going to tank these up against the wall in general uh, and kill them based on the spells and the orders that you want to. So we'll go ahead and kill these really fast, and then we will talk about Crow Magnus. All right, so we are now at Cro-Magnus. So we've cleared out this hallway because this is where we're going to be fighting him. You can see he is currently hidden in his little cage. Um, that's what he looks like right there. That's about the size of him. Um, you pull this lever to get him to spawn, but once he's spawned, what you want to do um, is you want to have initially, initially you want to have all of your healers and everything um, in range DPS and melee DPS um, that aren't main tank healers are going to hide behind this pillar right here. They're going to wait for Cro-Magnus to get in position, so they're going to be on this side specifically first. Um, and then once Cro-Magnus is positioned, they're going to jump out and stand here. Um, all your healers can stand right here so they can stay out of line of sight of Cro-Magnus for your raid healing. <clears throat> um, and then they're going to DPS him here. Um, Chromagnus does two major things um, we will get to in a moment. I want to talk about positioning first. They are breaths and afflictions. Uh, when breaths happen, your ranged and your DPS need to tuck in to get out of line of sight. Um, as I said, your healer should continue to stand back here. Your main tank is going to be standing right here where Diggity is. Um, he is going to tank him a little bit forward, um, and then your main tank healers are going to stand roughly about here where they can line of sight the boss um, but continue to heal your main tank without causing any problems where Eagle roughly is. He's probably going to step forward a little bit, um, but we should be good 
uh, right there and then you'll heal that. So basically that's the standard part where you're going to stand. You want to put about four or five. Your tank's going to get hit the hell. So you need to put one of each uh, healing class in here. Reason being is you need to be able to curse the spell uh, and remove diseases because all the afflictions that come out. So let's go ahead and talk about the afflictions. I'm going to turn <clears throat> the afflictions are uh, red, green, blue, black, and bronze. Uh, the red affliction does extra fire damage every second. Green does extra nature damage. Blue slows you and drains mana and casting speed. Uh, black does increased fire damage to you. And bronze randomly stuns you. Bronze, you need hourglass sand to remove. Um, I highly recommend the first time you're in here, you prior to prior to prioritize your hunters healers and tanks so that they can uh, go ahead and get those hourglass sands to pop them so that they can stay alive specifically your main tank healers are the ones you need for your hourglass sand not your raid healers uh, reason being is they just need to be able to keep tank up uh, through that uh, and your hunters can manage um, these afflictions need to be removed as soon as possible um, through disease dispelling to cursing and all that stuff so if you have the opportunity to to curse or dispel you need to do it immediately to get rid of these afflictions um, the next attribute which uh, will change every single week is your breaths uh, chromagnus has the opportunity to use five breaths only two of which will be used on a given week they do not change during that week but every reset they will change the breaths that you have an opportunity at they are red green blue black and bronze red is incinerate which does 4,000 damage for example if you have black affliction up where he does double fire damage and then you get hit with incinerate with a red breath you're going to get hit for about 8,000 damage since it doubles the amount of damage you're going to take and then there's green that does acid breath um, this is going to give you nature damage over time frost burn is going to reduce your attack speed by 80 percent and do 1400 damage um, so I suggest your DPS lays off until frost burn burns out so your tank can generate enough threat uh, and then there is Ignite Flesh, which does about 750 damage every second and stacks. Uh, so basically you have to try to kill them. It kind of puts you on a, uh, hopefully you get a break in there, but it lasts for a minute. Uh, but basically puts you on a timer. Um, if you get too many Ignite Flesh stacks, you're done. Uh, and then next is going to be Time Lapse. Um, if you get Time Lapse, we have to talk about a different mechanic in here. Uh, when Time Lapse Breath happens, what happens is you lose half your maximum health. It stuns your target for six seconds. It automatically reduces your threat. So when you would normally run over to dodge the breaths, in this situation, every single DPS, ranged healer, uh, and uh, main tank are going to stay out and eat the breath. The main tank healers will remain in their location, but your off tank, as you can see over here, will stay hidden. Uh, since this reduces your threat so much, it's a free threat wipe, um, you want your main your off tank to continue to gain that threat. So when he casts the bronze and stuns everyone for six seconds, he immediately is going to be like, oh, I need to get this tank. So as soon as the bronze is cast, your, main, your off tank is going to go ahead and jump out from position of hiding, as you're going to see here. He's going to grab the boss and continue to move into the location where the main tank is currently. He will then replace the main tank as the main tank, and the main tank will make his way back around the corner um, and become the off tank at this point. So Diggity will make his way over here to replace uh, the off tank, and now the off tank is now your main tank, and your main tank healers are now healing the off tank. When this transition's happening, as soon as the bronze breath is called, your uh, main tank healers will need to step out from their hidey hole and heal the off tank that is coming around this corner with the boss uh, until he gets back in position, and then they can go ahead and step it. Um, I highly recommend that if you can have a flare or something here, but in general, they should know right where they're standing. The reason it's not the stand is right here, as you can see on the map, um, and it should be a easy tank and spank minus those couple mechanics with breaths and afflictions uh, but overall that's how you fight the boss that's how you beat them LOSing breaths making sure you dispel to curse to remove disease um, one other aspect you have to remember and this is why your hunters need your hourglass sand is he does do a frenzy this frenzy can be taken down via tranquilizing shot uh, but on top of it um, at 20% he will permanently enrage and start Mack trucking the tank um, so at 20% you need to bring him down very quickly uh, and hopefully get him down fast enough to where your group can get him dead uh, he can continue to frenzy on top of enrage so that needs to be removed immediately uh, if he does frenzy and get enraged it is going to hit your tank for a whole heck of a ton if he your main tank dies in general, normally your raid's going to die because he's going to breathe on the raid and it just turns into a bad situation. So, uh, especially since he's non-tauntable. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open this door. All right, welcome to Nefarian. So we are here at Nefarian. He is a technically two or three phase fight. Um, and I say three phase technically because the third phase is really just 
um, something spawning, and then you deal with it and move back to the standard phase. So phase one, what you're going to have is you're going to have these two uh, holes down here. You see these tunnels right here. This is one, and there's two. You're going to get drachnoids and things that spawn. Uh, I'm going to get in there and get a picture of those, but there are five different types of drachnoids. Uh, there is the red, which resists fire and deal fire damage in a cone. There's blue that you know, resists frost and drain mana and reduce attack speed. Green resists fire or nature and can stun. Black resists shadow and fire uh, and deals strong direct fire damage. Uh, and then bronze is resists arcane and lowers casting speed and attacking speed. Uh, in general, what you want to do is you want to have your tanks two on a side. You can see we got bronze here, so uh, that's going to resist arcane. And on this side, we have... Um, another one, but as I said, we have two tanks. You have your healers in the back uh, for each side, so you want to split them. Uh, and then what you want to do, so we have blue over here. Uh, and what you want to do is have all your DPS sitting in the middle right by Nefarian. Um, he's going to be shadow bolting and mind controlling. So, like, I just got mind controlled. He's going to be shadow bolting and mind controlling people in general. The people that are mind controlled need to be CC'd via... Um, uh, stuns uh, or sheeping or some kind of sap or something but in general you need to control these people um, so that they are mind controlled uh, and controlled well uh, but basically what you want to do is you want all your groups split in here because you want to have two different types of groups happening you either want uh, melee and hunters and then you want your aoe groups because in general red and bronze are best dealt with with aoe and blue and black are best killed with hunters and direct damage um, when that happens and you get through it um, they'll split off to each side and do it uh, and then during phase two, as you see here, Nefarian will be spawned. Uh, during phase two, you'll see how Talos is currently tanking him up in the corner. They're going to tank him. Um, they're going to kill him really quickly. It's not a big deal, uh, but he's going to continually fear. So you need fear wards, tremor totems, things like that in order to enable it um, and go through it. During the entirety of phase two, um, Nefarian is going to do what are called class calls. Um, I'm going to go through each one of these, but they're also going to be on the screen at the same time. There's Druid, which morphs you into cat form and you're unable to shapeshift. Uh, Hunter, which is a ranged weapon and your hand immediately breaks. So I suggest a macro where you switch to a second weapon uh, and then go back to uh, your main weapon after the class calls over. So before the class call, switch your weapon and then switch back just so you don't lose your main weapon. Mages will just cast Polymorph on people that need to be dispelled. Paladins will cast a Blessing of Protection on Nefarian, which means your melee does zero damage. So they should save their time. Um, and casters are going to do most of the damage. Priests, um, you will apply what's called a Corrupted Healing, uh, which in general will make it so that there's a dot for damage on it um, where they're doing damage instead of healing, so they just need to immediately stop doing anything. I normally suggest they either wand the boss to get mana back, since you should have a Judgment of Wisdom up or something of that nature, um, or you can have fun with that. Uh, the next one is going to be Shamans, uh, or I'm sorry, Rogues. Rogues are placed in front of Nefarian and are going to get cleaved, uh, since Nefarian does cleave and tail wipe just like almost every dragon does, or large dragon, shall we say. Uh, and basically, you're going to have to heal those rogues the best you can, keep them alive during the fight. Uh, and then there's shamans. They're going to place down a fire nova and wind fury totem um, that are going to give Nefarian extra damage uh, and allow him to do that. So you need to kill those totems right away. Uh, Ro Warlocks will summon infernals. Um, these infernals are going to go ahead and have to be managed with, so they're going to drop two infernals per warlock. So you want them to get away from the raid because they, when the infernals land, they do AOE damage. Um, and basically, what you need to do um, is get it. This is phase three right here. These are the bone constructs. Uh, we'll get to those in a minute, but that's what they look like. Um, and then um, you need to do AOE damage with those warlocks uh, and then kill the infernals and then go back to the boss. For warriors, they're going to swap to berserker stance and take double damage. Um, the fairing is non -ta tauntable, so basically during this time, you need to make sure your tank is getting, getting lots of extra heals because he's going to get hit extra hard um, and just keep him alive. Uh, he's going to continue doing these class calls, continuing to fear, tail wipe, and... Um, Tail wipe and cleave. As I said, your main tank is going to be right where the head of Nefarian is currently with his dead body. Uh, your melee is going to be back on the back leg, just like in Valstrez, so they can backstab all day and do all that fun stuff. Uh, what you want to do is put your ranged over here on the right side, um, and everyone's going to be casting here and doing everything that they need to during their class calls. At 20%, Nefarian will do what is called the Bone Construct Call, as you saw that happen. We spoke about that briefly. Uh, basically, what you want to do is you want to get those down. They're not very strong, but they do do a lot of damage because there is 42 of them. Um, what you want to do is there's three different ways you can handle it. You can have a warrior go in and challenging shout and shield wall. You can have paladins go in and holy wrath and uh, protect themselves, um, or you can 
blessing of protection a mage and have them go in an AOE. Um, there are multiple ways to manage it, but once you manage those constructs, you go back to the boss doing the exact same thing. He's going to do his class calls, he's going to fear, and you get him down and end him, uh, and then you loot him and move on with the thing. Uh, one major note that you need to have is every single person needs to have their Ani cloak on. Uh, this is everyone, tanks, everybody, because he does a full raid-wide shadow flame. If you don't have an Ani cloak, you can't LS it, you fall over, you die, it's game over. So you have to have your Ani cloak. There's no questions asked. If you don't have an Ani cloak, you will die on this fight. So you need to have one for every single raid. Otherwise, you cannot complete the boss very easily without losing a ton of people. With that, that's going to be the end of it. You're going to kill the Farian. It's going to be fantastic. You're going to get through BWL. I hope this guide gives you a good breakdown of all the trash, uh, the boss himself, every single boss and everything. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them on the comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications. But as always, I hope you have a fantastic day, and we'll see you on the next episode of Lemur's Corner.